Okay, number of expected accidents. If 120 people were employed each day. What is it? About five. 4.8? Yeah, so it's the number of accidents. So it's probably only going to be a whole number. So about five, right? Four, four or five, more, maybe more likely five, four or five. Okay, what function do you use first? What function do you use first to find that value? G comes first, and then F. Okay, so what makes this possible? What makes that process, what makes doing that two-step process possible? This is the key. Who can articulate? What, why is this possible to... To do these two functions in sequence. Is it Jad? Yeah. Yeah. We have a column in uh, both functions that's the same. Okay, right. So, but, but not, it's not about a column, it's about a quantity, right? Yeah. So, tell me about the quantity, right? So, what quantity is it for function G? The average length of uh, what is this chip? The output, right? The output of G is the same as? The input of F. The input of F. That's the key to this. The output of G has to be the same kind of quantity as the input of F in order for this two-step process to be viable, right? To make sense, to work. Okay, so we want to represent with function notation the number of expected accidents if 150 people were employed. How can we do that? We don't know what the number is, right? It's off the chart. But it, it's, it exists, right? It exists. There's some... If we employed 150 people, there'd be some number of accidents, something less than five, right? Matt? F of G of 150. He wants F of G of 150. But I thought G was first. Is this saying that F is first or G is first? G, G right? We're putting, so start by putting 150 into G. And then the output of G is also the input into F. Is he right? Does this work? Yeah. This is this. The meaning of those symbols right here is the number of expected accidents. It's an output of F, right? Looking at that thing, that's the output of F. When F's input is what? The output of G. When its input is 150, right? So that whole thing is the output of F. When its input is the output of G. So in this expression, this G150 represents actually two things. Output of G and also input of F. It's in the parentheses here for the F function. It's both. That's why it has to, because it's both, that's why it has to be the same quantity for this to work. In this case, average length of worker shifts is the output of G. It's also the input of F. Okay, what about f of g of 80? Does it have meaning? Does it work? And what? What? Does it, does it work? Yeah, it works. And what is the meaning? G, f of g of 180, or f of g of 80? Yep. Yeah. It's the number of accidents. It's the, this is the number of accidents. It's an output of F. It's an output of F, specifically when there's 80 workers each day. What about G of F of 9? Does it work? Yeah. yeah? It's cool? G of F of 9 is cool? Okay. You can, it's not on the chart, but you can solve for it. What is the, so what is F of 9? What's the output? Not the number. What does it mean? The output of F. Number of accidents. Okay, and we're taking that number of accidents, and what are we doing with it? Putting it for G, and what's the input into G? Number of workers. How does G like that? What is G's function? What is G's function? It takes number of workers, and we are giving it a number of accidents. G says, no way, that's not my function. I don't do that. I don't roll like that, right? This doesn't work. I know, I know about you guys. Okay. All right, so, so yeah, so 
the output of F is a number of accidents, and G is expecting a number of workers. So G says, that's not my function. I don't do that. So that doesn't make sense. G of F of 9 does not make sense. Does not exist. Does not have real world meaning. All right, f of g of x of 13. Is it possible to determine a value of x that makes this statement true? What is it? So you, what, what was the process you did to figure out what x was? You looked at what first? Output of f. Number of accidents at 13. And you did what? You said what input into f corresponds to an output of f of 13, which is 12 hour shifts, 12 hour shifts. And so what we've really got here is we have twelve hour shifts, f of 12. Is that right? And so then what is 12? No, 12 is not 65. 12 is 12. 12 is the output of G. And so we're looking for the input of G that gives an output of 12. Question? Oh, go ahead. What is it? 65. So this is saying now what is, what is the number of workers that would result in 13 industrial accidents? So that's the input of G that would give us an output of F of 13. OK, so how did you do on the table? What's, so did you make the table? What's the input into F? If it's, we're going to do the same, H is going to be in one step, what we've been doing in two steps, then what should the input into H be? Number of workers. Well, that's really blue. Okay. All right. And what about the output? Length of worker shifts or expected accidents? Okay, and so then if you if you were you should have gotten a table like this. Okay, so what's the deal here? So the this idea of taking two functions in series or in sequence where the output of the first becomes the input of the second. This is the idea of composition, okay? Composition of functions. We're composing the two functions. We're making a longer process out of two functions. But then we can make that into one step, like you did in the table. And that is the composition of the two. The, two, the composition of the two is the single function that performs the start to end function of those two together. So when we created this course for uh, pre-calculus for engineers, this is one thing the engineers, uh, engineering college wanted from us. We just want students to understand composition. Composition, okay? So that's what we're, we're working hard on here. So let's look at another example. If I have, hopefully have, look on page. Any, any questions about this? And you, you had a couple web work so far on this. Hopefully it's coming together. Look on page. Uh, 92, 93 in your workbook. So I'm going to, you're not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to give you one task to do. So just listen carefully on page 92. Let's read the setup together, okay? It says a pebble is thrown into a lake and the radius of the ripple travels outward at 0.7 meters per second. Your goal is to determine the area inside the ripple in terms of the number of seconds elapsed since the pebble hit the water. Okay, so 
the ripple travels outward at 0.7 meters per second. It's a circular ripple. Okay, so now look over on page 93. All you're going to do is part D, 1 and 2, top of the page. So what does it mean to define a function? Hopefully we got this by now. So you did this in your web work? So when we define, say, the input was the side length of the square cutout, and the output was the volume of the box. We defined a function. What did that look like when we defined the function? What are the elements of the definition of a function? What's one of the elements? Name. Name. So let's call it V. OK? What's another element? Input. What's another element? Rule. For an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, it was this, right? That's the rule. And we took time to figure that out. So we got the name, the input, and the rule, and kind of most importantly here is what that we haven't said yet? The input, the name, the rule, and the... Where in the definition do you see the output represented? Where is the output represented in the rule? <coughs> We better know this. V of x. That's the output of the function v when the input is x. That's the what I put in blue is the output of the function v when the input is x. Okay? This is a function definition. It's telling us we, we're establishing the name, the input, the output, and the rule. So you're gonna write. Let's see, does it give you variables? Yes, it gives you your it gives you your variables for your quantities. So in part D there, 1 and 2, you're going to define functions, meaning set up a function definition. The first one called F, the second one called G. This is really important that you all should be able to do this, okay? Go, so do that. Now you have to come up with the rule, right? So there's a little bit of problem solving to do here. Based on the information given, you have to determine those two rules for F and G.
So in, in F, is the, the rule for F, is it going to have R's in it or T's in it? Is it going to have R's in it or T's in it? Okay, so the in, if the input is T, then your rule is an expression that has T's in it that gives you R. Okay, does that help? So you're looking for an expression, that a calculation on T that gives you the output at R. What's the input? What's the output? What's the input of F? Is it R or T? So input into F is what? What's the input into F? T. T. And we said that we need an expression of T or R? T. So the rule, the rule takes input and cranks on it and does so, so some expression of input. So it's going to be an expression with T's in it that gives us, in this case, radius, output. So we can write this definition and we're never, we're never going to write the symbol R. Because where, is, where do we see R? Once we get this rule, where, where does radius show up in our rule? F. f of t is R. It's the output. The output is F of t. So when we write the definition, we could never, it's, we could just not write R. Because it shows up as F of t. Matt? Would be wrong if write it as R equals F of t? No, that's okay. okay. Yeah, if you, want, if you want to start up and say R equals F of t and then your rule, that's fine too. But it's also okay to never write an R. Okay, so what is the rule? What is what is it that we do to t to get radius? Point seven over t. Is it point seven over t? 
think you got overruled there. I think it's times t. So if you're unsure, here's what you do. Make a little table of values. After zero seconds, what's the radius? After one second, what's the radius? And this is, I'm not cranking in here. I'm before we get this, right? So we're trying to figure this out. We're trying to figure this out. After 10 seconds, what's the radius? Seven. So then we're asking, all right, how do I get r from t? Well, it's always 0.7 times t. So that's a good trick. If you're trying to figure out a rule, set up a table of values of input and output, and then look at the relationship and see, what am I doing to t or the input every time to get the radius? OK, input into g according to this. A as a function of radius, what is input? Right? Output as, remember those expressions? Output as a function of input. Output with respect to input. All right, so that means our input is radius. The rule is going to have R's in it or A's in it? So we need a rule that has R's in it that gives us what? Area. Pi R squared. Pi R squared, all remember that. Area of a circle. Where do we see area in this function definition? G of R, the output. G of R means area. <clears throat> okay, so the question is, what if anything makes sense? <coughs> F of G of X or G of F of X? So, do... Does one of them make sense? Do both of them make sense? Do neither of them make sense? So you analyze this. Think about this for a second. Does one of those two make sense according to how we've uh, defined f and g? Go, think about that. Talk about it. Did anyone, everyone get your homework back? Your graded homework? You didn't? You just? So, it's not in there. Did you get the stack? Never saw the stack. Okay. Just hand over. Is there anybody else that didn't get did their homework? Okay, Natalie. What's the output of G? What quantity is the output of G? Area. And so, does this make sense? Why around f of g of x, if, if the output of g is area, does f of g of x make sense? And why aren't, what? No. Why not? Because you can't What does the f function want for input? <coughs> time. Output of g is area, input of f is time. Right? Wrong, right? So it, it's wrong. It doesn't work. That doesn't make sense. F is expecting a quantity of time. We're trying to give it a quantity of area. Okay, what about the other one? Margarita, tell me about the input and output and does it work or not? Okay, yeah, it works um, because e, f of t, or f of x, something um, like that. The output is r, Well said, right? So the output of f is radius, and the input of g is radius. So we're good. So we're good because we can, if we get radius out of this, then g is happy with radius coming into it, right? With radius coming in as input. So then this composition would do what? This composition of functions would take what and give what in the end? So it would receive time and give you area in the end, right? And then the middleman would be, radius is the middleman, right? So it takes time, 
converts to radius, takes radius, converts to area. Two-step composition. So let's see a, a picture of that. All right, so here's a, a slick picture of that. So our first function is, which one was this? Was this F or G? That was F. F came first. Time went into F. This rule gave radius. Then radius went into G, and we got area. So I want you to do the two-step process and find the area after 4.2 seconds. So find the area of the ripple. of it as a two-step process. Thinking or thinking through this as a two-step process, find the area of the pebble. And then I want you to, part two of this is represent your answer in function notation. So find the area, and then represent that answer using function notation. Use function notation to say this is, this is what that answer would mean using function notation. Point seven times pi squared. What do you think? Point seven times pi squared. Is that right? All right. Is it Caleb? Is it Caleb right here. It's Caleb. How did you? So what did you think about this? How did you find? Written. What? What is written? Oh, you're written. What is Caleb? Back there. Sorry, it's written. Go ahead. How did you do part A? Um, well, I took four point two. Okay. And then I squared my answer and multiplied by Right. So you took 4.2 and multiplied by 0.7, which gives you the radius. radius. And what'd you get? 2.94. So we got to put 4.2 in. Yeah. Wow. Okay. You said 2.94? And then you did? OK, hold on. Squared it and? Yep, and then? And tell me the area. Is that inches squared? 
How do you do? Did you guys get 27.15? Cool. All right. So represent that number, 27.15, with all these functions we define. Meters. That sounds better anyway. Thank you. Meter squared. Cool. All right. I want to represent this number, 27.15 meters squared, with function notation. Elon, did you get that? f of t equals pi t squared. All right, so that sounds like you're trying to define a function. I'm asking you to, to represent that number with notation. So what is it that we just did that gave us the number 27.15? Okay, look. G of f of what? So g of f of 4.2, right? 4.2, we got the output, which was the radius after 4.2 seconds, that's f. And then we took that output and we put it into g to get the area. And that gave us 27.15. So g of f of 4.2 is what you just did. Make sense? OK. So now. If the radius is 0.7t, and we know the area is f or g of f, right? Say of x, or x is any what time, then we can take. Watch this, so it can take that rule, 0.7t, because that is f, and I can put it in for this, and what would it be? It would be equal g of what? Sorry. 0.7t. And so how would you, what is g of 0.7t? What is g of 0, tell me your name again. Ready, sir? Yeah. What would g of 0.7t be? Right. So the input is 0.7t, and g, the function g says to square the input, right? It says square the input, square the radius, and multiply by? Didn't we just follow the rule for function g if the input was 0.7t? So I simplified that, I get 0.49 times pi times t squared. What does that rule do now? What does that rule do? It takes, what, so what input does that rule use? time. And what output does it give? Area. So this rule is for like a new function that does this two machine deal, right? This two step process as one. That's what we were talking about before. So what do we get? 0 0.49 pi t squared. So we just found the rule for the one-step version of the uh, two-step process, FG process, right? So if we call that H, we can define that as H of T, like it says here. So H of T is 0 0.49. So one big machine that does the same process as the two in succession. So now the initial input is t and then the final output is a. So now do h of 4.2. Go. h of 4.2. Find it.
And you should, you got? Same thing. We're not done. We're not done. Same thing, right? So if it's, it's the correct one-step version, you're going to get the same area for the same time. Okay, flip to page 96. So here you're just given functions and you're not told. Please be somewhere around here. Is this what it is? Sweet. Okay. Here you're just given functions, but you're not told what the meanings of the input and output quantities are. So look at g of h of x. So g of h of x would mean... What is h of x? Well, it's x over 4, right? So what's g of, so this is this m function down here, part c. g of h of x would be g of, well, h of x is x over 4, right? So how could we write g of x over 4? What would it be? 2x plus 9 over 4? No, g, x over 4 is our new input. This says, g function says, take 2 times the input plus 9. So we want 2 times x over 4. So that is this function m, g of h of x. But because there's no quantities assigned, it's perfectly legitimate to say h of g of x also. So if we do, say, function uh, q is h of g of x which would be h of, what are we putting into h then? 2x plus 9 is g. <coughs> what is h of 2x plus 9? So our input into h is 2x plus 9. The function h says take the input and divide by 4. So we're going to take the input into h and divide by 4. So when you just have these function definitions and you don't have quantities defined, you can compose them either way. It's, it's valid. So when you do g of h of x, you get this, 2 times x over 4 plus 9. When you do h of g of x, you get 2x plus 9 all over 4. So you get a different process regardless of what you do. Okay, as you're packing up, don't walk away. I just want to show you on Blackboard. Just no talking, don't walk away yet. First of all, please stop talking so I can let you go. I posted the assignment for, I thought I did. It's going to come up at, at 10 o'clock. Uh, anyway, it, your assignment for Wednesday is you have written work that I posted already. It's, it's, there's nothing added to it. And then you have a web work. It's a little bit longer. Start early. Um, and then uh, our exam is Friday and Monday. So I, I st started this new area called exam prep. In exam prep, you see exam one folder. Okay, there's a, an outline. It's comprehensive. It covers everything on the exam. Quizzes, one through three. Okay, so... Uh, Quiz 3 is not there yet, but 1 and 2. There's both a blank version and a solutions version for quizzes 1 and 2. There's some sample exam items. This is not comprehensive of the exam, okay? But it gives you a feel for what the exam will be like, okay? And it's a good practice, but it's not comprehensive. And then there's this practice sheet, which will start Wednesday in class. We're going to do inverse functions on Wednesday. That is on the exam, okay? So this practice sheet... We will start in class, and then after class Wednesday, you can work on it to study. Okay? Thank you.
I got one here. There.